하늘 저 하늘 별빛과 같이 빛을 빛을 뿌리며 살아왔던가 내 마음 내 마음 조국을 위해 밝은 빛을 뿌려왔던가 나 키워준 정든 어머니 조국 없인 내 삶도 없어 없어 그만 구비도 두려움 없던가 내 마음 내, 내 마음 소국을 위해 주저없이 달려왔던가 꿈을 꽃혀준 행복의 효랑 소국 없인 가정도 없어 간직하리라 생물 빛내준 위대한 그품 소국 없인 미래도 없어 같이 이룹니다 나의 모든 것 소름 높은 나의 소국이 한 생물 영원히 내 진정 Sung Military Academy's anachronism convinced me that I must find a new way of fighting for Korea. A dozen or so persons, armed with a handful of rifles, crossing Yalu to kill some miserable police and collecting a few one now and then, would never get Korea freed. It was clear to me that there must be a better way and that we must find it soon. My friends agreed with me. Most of my classmates, however, refused to go along and they either opposed my notion or sat on the fence. For some students were not allowed to read communist publications. One day, I took communist manifesto to class and my friends warned me that I should not have done it. The school was quite strict on leftist documents on campus and punished violators severely by expelling or reprimanding. But I was not afraid of getting booted out for reading a book I believed in. I found communist manifesto in Kim Sai Woo's library, which had many other books on communism. I saw from the books he had that Kim Sai Wu was deep into communist ideology, in tune with the trend in the world at the time. I was unhappy that the school did not allow us to read books on communism. I did not understand why the school forbade us from seeking new ideas and delving into them. I read communist books in defiance of the school authority. There were so many students wanting to read the books, I had to set up a checkout forward slash check-in rule in order to meet the rising demand. For they followed my rule and books were checked out and returned on time, with the exception of Jie Young Chun. Jie was excited easily and not punctual and careless about hiding communist books from the school authority. Jie kept communist manifesto for 10 days and I asked him to return it because there was a long line of people waiting to read it. Je begged me for two more days, because he was on to something in the book. Next day, Je did not show up in the morning classes, and sneaked out the dormitory. He was nowhere to be seen in the lunchroom. 
We found him engrossed reading communist manifesto hiding in a bush by Hybel River. I warned him that reading the book was okay, but he should not skip classes to read it. Je promised me that he would be more careful, but he brought the manifesto to the history class and got caught reading it by the instructor. The instructor took the book away from him and took it to the school director. They traced the book to me and Kim Sai Wu's library, the history teacher was sent to Kim Sai Wu's house to raise hell. He told Kim Sai Wu that the academy counted on Kim for support and it was unbecoming of Kim to allow the students to read leftist publications. He asked Kim to stop lending his books to the students. He then turned to me and said, Sung Ju, you better watch out. Je promised I was offended by my school's action. I said to Kim Sai Wu, to be well-rounded, man must be broadly educated. Why does the school deny its students the opportunity to study fresh ideas widely accepted in the rest of the world? Books on Leninism and Marxism are being sold everywhere and any illiterate person can get them. I don't understand why Hwasung has to be the only place where the books are banned. Kim Sai Wu sighed and said that it was the policy of the general staff and the school, and therefore, it was well over his head. He said there was nothing he could do to change it. Man must be judged mainly by his ideology, and so must an educational institution by its pedagogical philosophy. Hwasung Military Academy was trying to solve modern problems with outdated methods. I was a this incident exposed to the student body that there was a group of students studying Marxism-Leninism on campus. The authorities threatened expulsion or severe punishment, but that made open-minded students more curious about the new ideology, and a rapidly increasing number of students came to me asking for books to read on communism. Father, when he was alive, told me to pick my friends carefully and to make as many friends as possible. No matter how righteous and magnificent plans one might have, Without friends who would share life and death together, nothing could be achieved. This in Among the many students I met, there was a Lee from Company Air. He was bright, able and mild-mannered, he was well-liked by everyone. The only fault he had was that he was an ultra-conservative, ideology-wise. He was the guy who talked about restoring monarchy in our political science class. We were cordial to each other, there was no friendship between us, until the day our school had a football match with Korean Model High School. Lee collided with a player of the other team, and injured a leg, while leading a charge. I stayed with him at the dormitory, and nursed him for ten days. He opened up to me and said that he was wrong to believe in monarchism, at a time when every nation was moving away from it, he said, you are right, Sung Ju. Korea must become a society in which working people get enough to eat and live well, we must kick out the Japanese and start enjoying life. Uh, I asked Lee, do you think we can defeat Japanese with what they teach us here? They say Japan is the fifth power of the world, and if so, how can our army, which can hardly scrounge up a few lousy guns for us, defeat Japan by itself? Lee answered, well, the best we can do is to be strong physically and shoot straight. What else can we do? We must follow what the veterans tell us. I told him he was wrong to think like that and I said, we cannot achieve independence that way. I have been studying Marxism-Leninism for a better way. The Japanese imperialists today present a distorted picture of communism because they fear it. Some Korean nationalists shun socialism, some wealthy nationalists say socialism is bad. But there is no reason why we, from poor labor and farming families, should go along with them and say socialism is bad, without first studying it. If you want to become true patriots, you must have thorough understanding of Marxism-Leninism. Lee was moved by my little speech and, after some reflection, asked me if he could borrow a book on socialism. I told him that he should concentrate on getting well and I would be happy to lend him a book after he was healed up. Winds of socialism swept through Hwasung, and no authority could stop it. All students except a few die-hard old-time nationalists were affected by the new way of thinking. I organized book review meetings for progressive students. We met alternately at Kim Sai Wu's house, Kang J. E. Ha's house and Huibel River Banks. When we met at Kim Sai Wu's library, he left us alone and made sure that his family or his guests stayed away from the library. Often. He sat outside and stood watch for us. I appreciated his silent support for what I was doing. When 
Kang Jae Ha was father's friend, and his son was a close friend of mine. Kang Jae Ha was a socialist in heart, and allowed us to meet at his house. He was one of those nationalists who did not shun communism. In fact, he pushed communism on me when I visited his house. He said, I am too old to change, but you boys are still young and should fight to win using communism, if necessary. His encouragement meant a lot to me. Kang had several books on communism. Looking back, I see that our book review meetings were quite advanced, we had touched upon various major issues in Korean Revolution. Through open debates, we were able to draw consensus among the participants. Kang, during a debate at Kim Sai Woo's house one day, Lee showed up hobbling on crutches, and asked me for that book I had promised. He said, I could not stay in bed while you guys study new ways of doing things. I don't want to be a straggler. That was how Lee became a member of our clique. To a capitalist, making money is the hobby, but for me, making friends is the hobby. The pleasure of finding a gold nugget pales in comparison to finding a true friend. My lifelong unending campaign to make friends began at Hwasung Military Academy. During once I had gathered enough friends around me, I searched for ways to organize and bind them together. If my memory serves me right, I disclosed my thoughts on getting organized at a meeting held in late September. I gave many reasons why we should be organized in order to liberate Korea and establish a nation for the working poor, we must walk a long difficult path ahead of us. If we get organized and fight valiantly together, the victory will be ours. After we are organized, we will rally the mass around us and awaken them, we will mobilize the mass to liberate Korea. My audience liked what they heard and wanted to get organized right away. I told them that we must do some homework before we get organized, that we must recruit more people to join us. They accepted my proposal and made a list of prospects. Each prospect was assigned to a member to be worked on. Some members worried that forming a new group might add to factionalism already in place. I told them, our organization will not be like any existing nationalist or communist organizations. It will be of an entirely different character. Its main purpose will be revolution, not factionalism. Liberation and revolution will be our primary objectives. Once after some preparations, we met on China's Foundation Day, the 10th of October, to pick our organization's name, its charter, its platforms, and its scope of mission. One week later, on the 17th of October, 1926, we met at Kim Sai Wu's house to formalize our organization. The meeting was held in an unheated, cold room in a solemn atmosphere. After 60 years, I still remember the energy and spirit that filled that room. All of us were filled with excitement. As the organization took shape, I thought of Father's Korean People's Association. Father spent years working hard in order to form the association, walking tens of thousands of re to bind together his friends scattered all over. After forming the association, he devoted all he had to achieve association's objectives, he died working for the association. Father passed the torch of his unfinished revolution to his children. Father's will you must free Korea even if your bones are broken and your body sundered came to my mind, and I took the first step to realize father will. I was profoundly gratified. We incorporated father's ideals in our platforms. I still remember the shiny faces of those present at the meeting, Cho Chang Gul, Kim Lee Kap, Lee J E Wu, Kang Byung Sun, Kim Won Wu, Park Gun Won, Lee Jong Rak and Park Cha Suk, the latter two betrayed me later on. We all swore to dedicate our life to our cause. There were many eloquent speeches, there were some less eloquent ones, too. I, too, gave a lengthy speech. I proposed to name our organization down with Imperialism Association, TD in short, Lee Wat Rang Note, TD is an acronym for TAH Du Jeguk Ju I Dong Mayung. TD was anti-imperialism, pro-independence and pro-freedom, its primary mission was to free Korea from Japan and the toiling mass from exploitation, its members were youth of Korea's new generation, with faith in socialism and communism, it was a new genre of pure revolutionary political organization. We in Although TD was formed to establish a socialist, communist society in Korea, we feared that some nationalists might consider it too far left and so, 
we chose our organization's name down with imperialism. We were careful not to offend the nationalists in power. The name was adopted unanimously. The charter and platforms I proposed were also accepted in toto. TD's mission was, first, to bring down Japanese imperialists and free Korea, second, to establish a socialist, communist nation in Korea, and third, to bring down other imperialists and establish communist states all over the world. We adopted resolutions for practical steps for our movement. We distributed printed copies of our charter and platforms to the attendees. Although Cho Chang Gul nominated me to be the leader of the organization. After the meeting, we ran to the banks of Huibal River, singing and holding hands, at the river bank, we swore allegiance to our cause, and made a vow to fight together to the end for our fatherland and revolution. I was so excited that night, and I could not sleep. To be frank, we thought we had conquered the world, we were drunk with youthful euphoria. Nothing can compare with the elation we felt that day. In those days, there were many communist organizations that had impressive credentials. Our organization was a mere infant just born, our membership was negligible compared to theirs, TD had left no mark anywhere. Nevertheless, we believed that ours was a fundamentally new way to doing things, and that we would succeed where other had failed. TD was not a faction that branched out an existing organization, its founding members had no association with any of the existing political organizations. TD was a brand new organization built from scratch. It was brand new, fresh as fresh snow, clean and refreshing as cool spring water. In the, its founding members were easygoing capable people. They could speak well, they could write well, they could compose songs well and they could fight well. They had many talents. They were first class young men and women of new Korea, and they rallied around me, we could do nothing wrong. The founding members worked together and broke through numerous barriers and obstacles on the path of our revolution. They were vanguards of Korean revolution. Kim Hyuk Gul, Cha Kwang Soo, Kim Lee Kap, Kang Byung Sun, Lee J. E. Woo and many members of TD perished heroically for Korea. Regrettably, there were some members who betrayed us. It, today, none of the founding members is alive. Many of the members died at prime of their life in nameless battlefields in foreign lands, never to enjoy the fruit of their struggle and sacrifice. They laid the foundation of the Korean Workers' Party and New Korea. The party's roots go back to our Down with Imperialism Association. The party's charter and platforms are based on those of the association. The day the association was formed was the day the Korean Revolution, a self-reliant independent movement, took its first step. After liberation, Cho Il Chun, aka Cho Hyun Woo, wrote articles on TD, A Brief History of Korean Revolution Overseas, and TD, and Kim Il Sung. Several years after TD was formed, Korean Revolutionary Army and Korea Restoration Association were formed, and 20 million Korean people heard our battle cries, tens of thousands of them joined our swelling ranks. I am proud of TD and its accomplishments.